helped us. Arthur Weasley. Well, I, Arthur Weasley helped us, and Peeves sabotaged us. <laughs> okay, we are live again. So sorry to all of you who are watching us. That was on my end. My computer apparently doesn't really like fan fiction. <laughs> um, we're trying to get. To out. Yes, that was a great time to find out at the last episode. <laughs> we're trying to get you all back. We're let's see. We're gonna try and get the links out here for this. Um, a uh, new, uh, new link for this show. Um, hopefully the old episode will... It, what's supposed to happen is that one will go up on our YouTube. Crush fingers. That, that just didn't disappear into the <laughs> void. Right? And then we've got a lost episode. Just like, how how fitting. How, how mysterious. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we can check on where this is going to. Let's see. So where you, you guys were talking about your... Your favorite. So, how far did you get with your favorite fictions? Um, <laughs> cut you off. It kind of turned into talking about like, um, like things we've had to like learn and like kind of become okay with reading out loud. Like for me, it's like kissing scenes and swearing, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. And finding the right space, place to record that is. Um, exactly. Yeah. And not getting eaten alive by cats when you yell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I said before we started recording, um, Stephen, one of our editors, um, noted that there were a lot of cats in the background of some, <laughs> some of our recordings. Not yeah. mine. I don't have cats. But <laughs> some readers. Have some readers. <laughs> Yeah, Let's that was see. me. Gracie knocked over my uh, lamp one time because she was mad that I was yelling and she couldn't make me stop, so she made a big traction. She would always be like, uh, so your cat uh, made some uh, introductions for herself in your recording. I'm like, I'm sorry. I had to redo it again. Let's see. All right, I'm shipping our link out to... Cool. Try and get people back to us since we lost everybody. Oh, our poor viewers. I feel so bad that that happened, but then fortunately there's <laughs> nothing we could help. Uh, uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, what else can we vamp with, you guys? <laughs> we got to um, vamp for a little see. bit more. Well, I, well, I can uh, say something about... Uh, thank you to everyone who helped us participate uh, with our MuggleNet audio fictions, especially those who are active with us and uh, sharing in our joy of reading audio fictions and uh, fan fiction in general up on our, our Facebook page. Um, I know that we get some of the same reoccurring people too who, who like to talk with us and like our photos and uh, mm -hmm. I know that we have um, Sue Sills and she's always saying hi to us and we've got uh, Rachel Glynn who is really excited about this live show and uh, we got we got a bunch of people that um, mean a lot to us. So thank you to you guys for sticking with us and um, hanging out with us even when we're not on live shows or recording. So thank you very much. It's it's been a pleasure to work with you guys. Absolutely, the the show wouldn't be what it is without our regular listeners and contributors because um, we are built on. Uh, Fan fiction, we're built on what people write. We're built on what people suggest to us. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's been fantastic to have those of you who have come into audio fictions, whether it was from the beginning or late, um, but also still, you know, suggesting stuff for us and giving us uh, great fictions to read. That has been, and, and listening to the show and giving us feedback, too. That's also been mm -hmm. really important to us. Yeah. Let's see. I'm, I've, I've put us out on Facebook, and now I'm, I'm moving over to Twitter because everybody's on the Twitter, right? The Twitter, <laughs> the young people on the Twitter. The same thing as the interwebs. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Michael's see. just now entering this century. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It, it, I, I do don't feel like tell I, him about Snapchat because that will blow his mind. Oh my God! If I, my phone would explode if I tried to put Snapchat on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have a flip phone? Yes, I still have my flip phone. <laughs> but everybody says Your when muggle I'm technology, it's adorable. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'm gonna shoot this out on Twitter and see if we got we've got some attention on Twitter. Hopefully MuggleNet can 
pick up the new link. Um, unfortunately, I can't get I can't send the new link through MuggleNet, but hopefully somebody on social media will be watching. Social media people from MuggleNet, shout out to you. Thank you so much for helping us get this show up and running and getting people over to us. It's been um, a pleasure working with you. It's always a pleasure working with you guys. So uh, thank you very much. And if you're there, please help us. <laughs> we want to get our listeners back for this last read because this is actually going to be a really good one. I, I hyped it up and then I... And then, like, just like the 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 climax, I cliffhanger. I just I I just we destroyed the chat. So let's see. <laughs> um, damage control. We're still here. <laughs> let's see. I was really hoping for a Harry Potter and Frozen crossover fiction. So where were you guys for that one? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Google Plus doesn't like fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Come find us. Come find us. There we go. New link. I think Come that's new link. Us where we sound. There we go. Come seek us where our voices sound. New <laughs> link. <laughs> that's the problem with five. it's awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Hashtag technical problems. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't have room. My, my tweets are always too big for that kind of stuff. Here we go. Bam. Okay. Let's see if they can find us again. Let's see how things are. Oh, good. We got some people back. We've got we've Yay. got a few people watching. Yay. Hi. Well, the hi, people who are watching. Thank you for coming back. It looks like we're slowly actually rebuilding our audience again. Yay. Hey. It worked. Okay. Yay. Good. So okay. Have some people too. And like I said, hopefully that first... Um, Read that we did that those that beautiful set of reads that is hopefully not lost to time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, that will uh, that should go up live on the uh, YouTube feed, and I'll just have to I'll just have to edit it all pretty and edit, edit the two parts together. We're just like Deathly Hallows. We had a part one. Exactly. There's no, there's no plan, guys. That is intentional too, guys. How yeah. How cool are we? Absolutely. See, if we were really doing it like Deathly Hallows or Things like that, we would have we would have waited a year. We would have just dropped off, and then a year later, come back in <laughs> part two. Hey, two. Be like, who are these folks again? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen you guys in a while. Yeah, no. Let me just mm -hmm. check one more time on our on our YouTube and make sure that everybody's getting back in. And then I guess we'll we'll go ahead and read, and then we'll see if people join us, and then we'll hang out cool. for just a little bit, and then we'll. Close up the show. Yep, we got it. We got a few more people back. Good. Yeah, and hey, good oh, news—it cool. did post to uh, YouTube part one, so we are Great. good to go. <gasps> Yay! Yay! Yay. It's, it's awkward, and and you know what? Actually, since it posted to YouTube before we start, I'm gonna go over to the part one video and let people know where to go for part two. Yeah, <laughs> you might still be <laughs> sitting there like, what happened? Where are you? <laughs> We're oh, still dude. here. That wasn't actually the ending. Talking about. How to say mm -hmm. swear words and awkward things in fan fiction. <laughs> we got too awkward talking about the kissing and, and stuff that it was like, wow, guys, we got to just wind this down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I do, I do remember, for, since I didn't get to contribute to that conversation, I will say um, when I did um, the fiction that I, what was it called? Oh, I don't even remember the title. I used to remember the title all the time. It was, it's about um, Ron and Hermione's first date. And Aww. I, I after like after the all the stuff at at, at Hogwarts, and uh, I I hadn't read the fiction all the way through when um when I <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. I mean, it wasn't. It still wasn't a bad fiction. It was a, it was a good fiction. It was just uh -huh. funny because I, uh, dang, I wish I could remember the name, but it was it was funny because at the end, um, Ron and Hermione um, do they they get a little tonguey with their kissing, um. And I had to, I had to just read it so serious. Like I was just. Oh. Like, the line was, he slipped her tongue into, he slipped his tongue into her mouth, and he was wrong. And I was just like, oof. <laughs> experience. You don't actually like to read them out loud, so it's like. Yeah. Yeah. You're like you read it in your mind, and right. even if you feel awkward in your mind, you can like. You know, start skimming the reading until you know it's safe again. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, right. They do that. We know. Well, and like, you know, <laughs> well, like you know how. Mistake. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, and like you know how like um. 
like with the Game of Thrones books, especially, like they're read by like this really, like this elderly gentleman. Oh, and really? So, yeah, like their audiobooks, and so like, you know, like listening to, um, you know, considering what goes on in Game of Thrones, like hearing all that read in like an old man's voice. But imagine what it's like for the elderly gentleman, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surprise! Yeah. No, things that come up. Well, yeah, because that's the thing actually with, you know, reading audiobooks is you really don't get that much prep for what you're doing. You just kind of right. have to do it. So. Uh -huh. Let's see. There we go. So I've shared the link through the YouTube channel. Hopefully that'll. Cool. Oh wait, did I share that through the current one? No, I shared that through the old one. Okay, good. And it is. It's it's playing on the YouTube, so it's live okay. somewhere. Thank God. Okay, so that's not lost to time. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that will be preserved. We don't have to get our time turners out for that. Good. Okay. Okay. So now that we're kind of finally back on track, let me just <laughs> check the YouTube feed one more time just to make sure we're still okay, and then we'll get started with this last read yeah. again. This last read, they we boy, we built this up. It's gonna be good. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this last read is um, a story that uh, Carol read. Again, probably one of the greatest fan fictions we've ever read, just because of the sheer amount of effort not only that went into the writing, but also the reading of this fiction. Um, how many? Cha I believe it was 22 chapters with an epilogue, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. 22, 22 or 23. 23. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was it was long. Yeah. Um, and Carol happily took this challenge on. Um, she blew it out of the park, blew it out of the water. It was amazing. And uh, it's a, it's called A Little More Time. It was written by Palace. And uh, the neat thing about this fiction is I think the most, probably the, the astonishing thing about this fic and why we've, if you go if you go back to any of our other live shows, including part one of this one, um, we... We just gush on this fiction. We've gushed about it every single time because um, not only in addition to the amazing writing and reading of this fic, but it is a fan fiction that amazingly manages to stick, despite going so wildly off the rails with what it's suggesting is happening in the fiction, um, it manages to stay very close to the concepts in canon. Mm -hmm. um, and where it doesn't, it manages to invent things that are very Rowling-esque that fill the gaps, um, so that you're not saying, "What the heck? That's not that shouldn't be happening in the world of Harry Potter." It covers mm -hmm. all the bases. Clearly, Palace. I just don't know how Palace wrote this fiction um, and finished it, because it would have had to been plotted almost akin to one of the Harry Potter books, the way it's written. Mm -hmm. um, it is about Teddy Lupin years down the line in the year 2018, as you'll see in the story, and he's now working for the Ministry of Magic in the Department of Mysteries. And he strategizes that there might actually be a way to bring Lupin and Tonks back to life and take them out of their time and put them into his timeline, which is exactly what he does. He actually manages to use a Time Turner, it's like a if you if you put Time Turners on a Stargate, um, it's kind of what he does. <laughs> and he manages to go back to the Battle of Hogwarts and pull Lupin and Tonks out of it um, while replacing the... the uh, he casts, a, I believe, a Geminio charm on them and replicates their bodies um, so that the story can still play out. And it even accounts for... Lupin being able to go to Harry when Harry called him with the Resurrection Stone. There's a, there, all the plot holes are covered, um, and it follows almost all the canon to a T. Um, and I've I've got it pulled up, luckily here now. And again, this one was read was read by Carol um, over a successive amount of episodes. This particular ex excerpt that we're going to read for you from the story is from chap uh, chapter. Uh, uh, chapter 5, Till Death Do Us Part, and it was read in episode 29. Again, this is a, a section of A Little More Time by Palace Carol. We miss you. We're so sorry that you couldn't be on either part 1 or part 2 of our live show. And um, this this one's for you, Carol. All right, Olivia, take it away. 
2049, Monday, 2nd July, 2018. 2018? What in the name of Merlin's scrawny backside is this all about? Tonks. The tone of Remus's voice was enough to tell her that her husband's eyes were fixed upon the same spot as hers. Why does that calendar appear to be under the impression that we are ridiculously close to celebrating our 21st wedding anniversary? She glanced across his frowning face as she carefully pulled him up to a sitting position. Is it a calendar? It looks more like someone's carved a random date into the wall than me. She squinted at the tile once more, fighting down a strange, plodding sense of doom that was rapidly set setting up residence in her stomach. I wonder if it's meant to be when a prophecy comes true or something. Her voice trailed away. The engraved figures were shifting. At uh, 2050. That's not carved in. Bloody hell, it is a calendar. A, a calendar that seems to think it's 20 years in the future. Her eyes drift around drifted almost unconsciously back to the now unmoving portal. Little hourglasses glinted at her mockingly. Time turners. No. No. That couldn't be right, it couldn't be. But one look into Remus's face told her that he was thinking exactly the same thing. It can't be. It can't. Why the hell would anyone even bother to drag two random people out of a battle and drop them 20 years into the future? Is this some sick Death Eater trick? Is dear Auntie Bellatrix laughing at me behind that locked door? What is going on here? I think the lock potion's still working a bit. I found everything I could. You're awake! At the unexpected voice, Tonks jumped about a foot head swinging round to her left. The young man was standing in the open doorway, awkwardly juggling handfuls of colourful potion vials. With a broad smile, he, do the he dumped the lot unceremoniously on the floor and rushed over to join them. I'm so sorry, he exclaimed, brushing his turquoise hair out of his eyes as he dropped to his knees beside them, gazing at Remus with a mixture of guilt, happiness and outright relief. I had no idea that anything like that was going to happen. I swear... I thought it would just be a straightforward pull, and you'd both be here and fine. He drew a long, deep breath. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Remus was staring at the young man. His eyes were drifting across his face, over his colourful hair, past those so familiar eyes, and then they flicked, almost unnoticeably, toward the engraved calendar. He blinked hard. I think I'll... Live? His tone was odd, confused, distracted, and ever so slightly shocked. <clears throat> Though I can't say whether I should. The young man's eyes widened as Remus's gaze, gaze buried with sudden intensity into his. It was you, wasn't it? You took my wand and grabbed my shoulder. You pulled us out of the battle. Oh, your wand. Fumbling slightly, the young man pulled the offending item out of his sleeve and handed it to Remus almost nervously. I'm really sorry about that. But you see, I couldn't type my own wand through, and I needed to cast a spell and make sure everything was as it should be. As it should be? Tonks abruptly found her voice. There's nothing here that... That's as it should be. We were fighting for the sake of the wizarding world, for our son, for everything. And you dragged us away and dumped us wherever the hell this is. Our friends are in danger. Harry Potter needs us. And you made us leave? Who the hell do you think you are? Her wand was twitching dangerously in her hand. I'd ask if you were a Death Eater if I wasn't sure that no Death Eater would be so dumb as to give Remus his wand back. I'm not a Death Eater. The young man stated hurriedly. There are no Death Eaters. Not anymore. He took a deep breath. And don't worry about the battle, because it's over now. Over? 
Tonks could feel her heart pounding against her ribcage. Over? But... The young man was smiling now, soft and reassuring. You won. He said quietly. Harry won. He survived. And Lord Voldemort is dead. You know who? After the months of prohibition, Tonks couldn't quite make herself say the name. Dead? Her mind was whirling. That he could be dead, that it could be over. Oh, she had wanted it, fought for it, dreamed of it, but somehow never quite believed it. And to be told like this in this strange room, with this young stranger not really knowing whether it was safe to believe, but desperately, desperately wanting to. And she felt she should believe him, could believe him. She felt like she knew him. Family. He, he felt like family. And if the calendar was telling the truth, twenty years had passed. Those eyes, that smile, that hair. Twenty years. He'd be twenty years old. A tiny face staring up into hers. A first smile. No. No, it can't be. This is insane. I know you must be confused. He sounded like a dad. His voice, Merlin, it was so similar, and those eyes, so much like Remus, that it had hurt her to look at them when she thought her husband gone. But it's okay. I promise. I can explain everything, but... Well, that's going to take a little time. Tongs found herself struggling to breathe. In her mind's eye, she pictured her baby, her little baby with hair that shifted with his moods, whom she'd held in her arms an hour, just an hour before. It couldn't be. She couldn't be looking at... Teddy? Teddy? It was as though someone had punched her in the gut. She felt winded, sick, bewildered, as she saw the young man's head whip around and steal... The last, steal away the last of her denials. Next to her, Remus's face was a frozen mask. Harry! She heard the young man. She couldn't think the name she'd heard. His name would make it real. Exclaim, shock and confusion, and confusion flashing across his face. What the hell is he doing here? Harry? Harry Potter? Teddy, I know you're here. Merlin, it was Harry. Though his voice was different, older. No, don't think about it. Don't think that way. It can't be so. I know what you're doing, Teddy. Oh. He was rising now. The young man with the turquoise hair, with a husband's eyes and her baby's smile. Anxiety written large across his features. Look, please. I know I've no right to ask anything of you, but please, just stay here. If he sees you, there'll be hell to pay. For all of us. Stay here. Please. One last glance, his eyes wide and pleading, and then he turned and rushed from the room. Every breath was almost more effort than she could face. Her eyes drifted toward her husband, pleading, begging him to dismiss the facts laid out before them and take her back to the world she knew. But one look in his eyes told her he couldn't. Remus. She whispered, her voice trailing away. She couldn't say it. I know. His hand caught hers and squeezed it almost desperately. Dora, I know. I think... He swallowed hard, eyes holding her gaze as though clinging to a lifeline. I think we just talked to our son. Ooh, and we just want to keep reading more because it's so good. I know. <laughs> so good. I, just, like, I gotta go um, on iTunes and download them all. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have strongly been wanting to listen to this story again and Carol's read of it. Um, hopefully, she feels we did it justice here. It is. It's okay. fun to hear actually with a with a cast of voices. Uh, yeah. Maybe some some day in the far off future, the audio fictions cast will reunite and we'll. <laughs> We'll read <laughs> like a whole chapter of this. This was just a small <laughs> section of, mm -hmm. of this particular chapter of chapter five. I thought it was great because it is this is the part where the story really gets going. Um, right. And again, the writing on this, it's just astonishing. It feels like something Rowling really could have written. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, again, 
And one of the one of our last examples here today uh, with this live show that fan fiction can do amazing things. You never know uh, the mm-hmm. kind of the places, the world you can go to with with fan fiction and what you can do even with uh, rolling stories. You can stay as close to it as you want, or you can drift as far away from it as you want. And mm-hmm. uh, this particular story absolutely just swept, I think, all of us away. And I think the most um, important thing that we try to try to do with audio fictions all these years was ensure, as we always said, that the magic lived beyond the books. I was very serious about that when I said that at, when I say that at the end of every episode, mm-hmm. um, because you just get lost. You can get lost in these stories. Um, again, this particular story, a little more time, had somewhere around twenty over. Oh, for 20 chap Carol this was actually one of her earlier reads she took mm-hmm. this on very early on in the in the audio fictions um, archives and uh, she um, she read it all the way through there were some fictions that we actually were so were so long we got a lot of fictions that were suggested to us by our frequenters and listeners that we couldn't read because they were some of them were over 50 chapters some of them were just way too long to read we yeah. actually developed a concept called Raw Reads that we were going to try, but it just dev- never got through because we barely had time for the podcast itself um, in the later mm-hmm. years. Um, but, uh, yeah, this the fact that Carol managed to get through this um, whole story as eloquently as she did, um, it just speaks uh, to the not only the writing, but her power as a reader. I think we all took on a lot of really interesting, challenging fictions, as you guys were talking about. There were just some things that... Mm-hmm perhaps you weren't used to or familiar with, and uh, you had to kind of just leap in and try it out. And often I think we discovered that that was worth it. Mm-hmm. So yep. um, Now, of course, before we leave, I'm going to, I'm going to check the chat and the, the YouTube video. We got, some, we got about like half of our audience back um, for things. Thank you all listeners who, who, who came back, who, who waited around and came back to listen to the story. Um, we appreciate that you lingered and waited for a bit to see what would happen. Spread the news, because we're still here for just a little bit. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments on the show, we were getting some great comments on the previous video. I can see if I can pull them back up. I, <laughs> I lost them, of course. Um, but uh, we were we were getting some great comments just from people saying that they've loved audio fictions from the beginning or that they have they came into the show late, but they've been listening consistently since. Um, and we really appreciate all of you who not only have stuck around, have come in the middle, or have maybe just come for this show. Um, we hope we've kind of shown you today that uh, fan fiction uh, is worth your time. Uh, I think the, sadly, the heyday of Harry Potter fan fiction, I think, has passed. Um, we <laughs> call it Jim. He's dead. Um, but <laughs> perhaps not that extreme, but... Uh, I'm like a reader, not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? I did, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no crossovers, please. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, the, the fan fiction definitely had a had an amazing surge in the early 2000s, and f- from what I can surmise, and maybe you guys have opinions on this, I would love to hear your thoughts, but. I kind of figured that it must have been a perfect storm of the internet still being kind of new at that mm-hmm. time and becoming very widespread and people still figuring out the kinds of things that they could share on the internet. Uh, back in that time, back in the early 2000s, the YouTube <laughs> was not something that everybody went to every day. You certainly could not be doing a live broadcast on YouTube back in that time. Right. Um, although... As you can see, the technology still has a way to go. (laughs) 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 But uh, things were being shared in a very different way back in the early 2000s, and I think it was just being discovered that fan fiction was something that could be shared Mm -hmm. um, on the Internet. And MuggleNet happened to see that early on and be ahead of the game, and lo and behold... MuggleNet fan fiction was birthed, and boy, was it ever active. I, I think um, out of all of us, uh, Olivia, you were on MuggleNet fan fiction kind of early on, weren't you? Kind of. Um, I actually started, um, my first story was actually kind of 
started in 2007. So, like, mm-hmm. not not super early, but, you know, I was kind of there during the main swing of things. Um, and, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was just really fun. But Yeah, and it's yeah. definitely... It's 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 changed though, hasn't it? It's gotten it's definitely yeah. gotten a bit quieter uh-huh. um, there, and uh, there's still people writing. Not to be mistaken, mm-hmm. there's definitely still people writing on Muggle Night fan fiction. Uh, although even Carol is, if you listen to episode 199, Carol even says that she has slowed down with her um, mm-hmm. Harry Potter fan fiction writing and has gone on to right. other things. She's actually working on um, hoping to get a book published, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so the so the world of fan fiction has changed, and there was a debate for a while um, with the MuggleNet staff and with between us about whether there was a possibility that um, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them would perhaps cause a resurge in fan fiction. I am personally, I am personally, personally, and part of the reason I decided to end the show is I, I am of the mind that it is not going to do that. I think there will be a brief surge, but. Um, Three movies doth not equal seven books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think there will definitely be an increase in that kind of fan fiction, but I think actually we found, especially from the cons I've go- gone to, and maybe, John, you can speak to this a little bit because you have joined me at LeakyCon both times now, but a lot of the authors that go to LeakyCon are actually authors because they started writing Harry Potter fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, we... Yeah. Go ahead, John. Why don't you talk a little bit about that from what we've seen? Which, and it's like that is great. And obviously, we all came from as as LeakyCon itself has evolved into other encompassing all sorts of other things, and is now GeekyCon. Like we all come from this, you know, one drop. And it's great that everyone takes it in either writing fan fiction on the beta boards or writing it in your diary that no one ever sees, or getting it published into a into a book or launching your literary career um, but then it you know everything else is dispersed and so then that means with as to bring it back to the Harry Potter that now every you know you kind of move on to the next thing that's going on and like all of our all the great fan fiction that's been written from back in the heyday that's all it lives still it's mm-hmm. in the podcast it's on the forums it's still out there um, and it'll never go away but um, the evolution of that and of the writers themselves to moving on to other things is really as bad as it is for for us because then there's less for us to read. It is really encouraging for you know the community as a whole that there are more people that are doing doing what they want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely, and of course, some of our fan fiction writers have moved on to other fandoms to write in mm-hmm. as well. So, um, and the important thing, actually, as John mentioned, with uh, fan fiction still being around is I wanted to make sure and let you, uh, the listeners, know that uh, audio fictions will still be around, not as a currently running show, but our archive will still be up. We are no longer going to be on Libsyn and iTunes, unfortunately, because MuggleNet does not have the funding to keep us there if we're not a continuously running show. Um, you will be able to find us, though, still. The Libsyn and um, iTunes accounts will still stay up probably through the rest of this month and maybe a little bit into January, but eventually that will be cut off. But I am working hard to make sure and upload the uh, rest of the archive to the Internet Archive. Um, our link, That link for that is on Facebook. It's uh, I will put it out on the Twitter. It's on all of our social media. You'll easily be able to find our whole set of stories. 200 parts one and two uh, will also be there. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so fantastic that we will have that still around um, as the Harry Potter fandom journeys into its next era. Um, Sadly, Mm -hmm. we will not be part of it currently, but the hope is that um, in future, if you guys, if you, the listeners, want it, um, we we are hoping that we can come back on rare occasion for special live shows like this one. Um, We will, the, the audio fiction team will still be keeping in touch um, and looking into doing that in future, um, possibly for holiday hangouts like we've done in the past or special events. Um, and of course, uh, we'll have, there will still be, there. even though we read a lot of fictions, 200 episodes worth of fictions, there are still thousands upon thousands of fictions left at MuggleNet Fan Fiction's archive. Um, so please make sure and head over there because despite our show ending, there are still plenty of fictions to read. We also wanted to briefly say, because it was um, a... Sad development in the Harry Potter world. 
um, that David Rael, uh, as if you have checked out MuggleNet lately, David Rael, the actor who played Elphius Dodge in the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows film Part 1, um, has passed away. Uh, it was we, We're always sad when we lose actors from the Harry Potter um, world. They're a part of the family, too. Um, so it's always sad to hear that. But, of course, just um, the, as, as audio fictions will hopefully live on on the Internet, so do the movies and all of the actors who we've lost to participate, who participated in the films. Um, and we also have a fantastic great crop of new material and films to look forward to with plenty more actors um, joining the Harry Potter family. Um, and uh, I will close the show up by saying thank you all listeners for attending the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for coming and finding us in part two. Um, that was totally planned. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, yes. And we re- we've enjoyed reading these fictions for you today. We hope you've enjoyed the sampling of our archive and that you'll take the time to maybe go through and download a few of the episodes um, that you've heard excerpts from today or any of the ep- other episodes on our archive. Uh, we've enjoyed this 200-episode five-year journey of reading to you. Uh, we're sorry to see it go, but of course, all good things must come to an end. But we are thankful that you have stuck with us until the very end. And as we always say, uh, the magic does indeed live beyond the books. So thank you once again, listeners and viewers, for joining us for episode 200 of MuggleNet Fan Fictions, Audio Fictions. And we will see you around. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys, for listening. Everybody say goodbye to our viewers. Thank you, Thank you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.